What has always made me passionate about the humanities is that the challenge they give us to um, understand who we are, what's meaningful in our lives, and the challenge of connecting with the lives of others. And it's for this reason that I, I've particularly enjoyed teaching classical mythology. And I've gone back this year, despite my consuming day job, which I love, uh, to teaching the night section of classical mythology at George Mason University. I'm having a wonderful time doing it. I think my students are as well. But one of the challenges is to get students to take ownership of the traditions, not simply to see them as things that they should learn for cultural literacy, as important as that is, and, um, and as much as I want them to be able to look at a piece of art and understand the dialogue that's gone on over the centuries. But more than anything else, I want to see them as participants in the making and the understanding of myth. And let me immediately say that I'm guided by Aristotle about what myth means. Just as Aristotle told us that poetry has more truth than history, because history only tells us the particulars and poetry tells us the universals, so mythology is not a series of pretty stories that are made up in people's heads, but they're ways of connecting us with the deep question of what it is to be a human being. And so with that, I started my um, class by putting uh, reproductions of a couple of postmodernist paintings of mythological scenes up in PowerPoint. And I do feel like a kid in a candy store now after 27 years having access to all these magnificent uh, slides of the whole tradition of art going back for millennia. But I, I put in front of them a scene by um, Milet Andreevic, a Yugoslavian artist, uh, that's called um, Afternoon of Actaeon. And it must be set in Central Park. Now, unlike the classical story in which poor Actaeon stumbles upon Artemis naked uh, and she in rage turns him into a stag so his dogs tear him to pieces. In this scene, Artemis is in a tank top and she's um, clearly enjoying the sun and the dogs are out playing in Central Park and Actaeon just wanders up there and the dogs are much more interested in the frisbee than they are in him. And the moral of the story is it doesn't have to end the way it did in Ovid. It can end the way we want it to end in a way that reflects our values. And so with this, I, I find myself engaged and engaged with my students in that process of understanding centuries and centuries of stories that are intended to illuminate the human condition and intended for us from one generation to the next to engage in dialogue with them. And I'll share one more. Teaching the Oresteia of Aeschylus, a, um, a trilogy of tragedies uh, built around revenge and cycles of violence. And the cycles only end when Athena sets up a law court. No longer the gods, you know, ex machina saying, do this, do that. A group of jurymen of Athenians who will determine the case. And she sets that up as an institution forever. In other words, Athens will solve the problems through a free institution that even the gods have failed. And so I asked my students, I said, uh, how many of you have ever really wanted to hurt somebody because you're angry and you feel that you want to take revenge? And a few hands went up tentatively and I said, you know, Either you're much better people than I am, or you're lying. <laughs> and what I want you to take away from this engagement with the Oresteia is the recognition that we can do better. What Aeschylus was setting up as a foundational story, drawing on older mythical traditions, was that we can overcome the darkest things in our lives. And that's the great, wonderful challenge. And once people begin to think that way, they see their lives as so much richer. As it was in the beginning, it's now and evermore shall be. In other words, it didn't happen just once. It wasn't a particular. It was a universal. In the Passover Seder, which I just led, if the Almighty hadn't taken us out from Egypt, 
then even we and our children and our children's children would still be slaves to Pharaoh in Egypt? Well, historically, no. But we're intended to look into our hearts and to recognize what it is that sets us free, what the challenge is of opposing tyranny, which is why our founders actually toyed with the idea of the crossing of the Red Sea as the national seal. That was Ben Franklin's favorite. So this is all mythological thinking. And it, it is one of those ways that the humanities have inspired me, have filled me with passion to share them with other people in the hopes that we will all understand each other better and live in ways that are more humane, more connected, and, more, and deeper. And in that sense, so much richer and more enjoyable.